This episode is sponsored by Free Market Kids. Hi everyone, welcome to Unchatter. Today you're listening to part two of my conversation with Toshi. Now I'm going to talk about inflation. It's 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 saddening to say the least. You know, it's saddening because I grew up in a situation where I could buy things with Kobo. So we have just like we have dollar and cents, we have naira and Kobo, right? But right now with the level of inflation. Kobo is useless. You you can't use the Kobo to buy anything. You can't even use the Kobo to get discounts at any store or anything. And as a matter of fact, five naira, ten naira, and twenty naira are are just you know old stories. You know the good old days because you can't buy anything with five naira. You can't purchase anything with ten naira. Even even a candy at this point, you can't even purchase a candy with ten naira. But it wasn't so before. It wasn't so a um, few years ago. But then we kept seeing how inflation just kept, you know, keeps affecting the society, keeps affecting the economy, and making it difficult for people to to survive. Right now, Nigeria is one of the poorest countries in the world. Why? Because now it's not because we don't have enough mineral resources. It's not because we are a poor country in the sense of it. But it's just, I would say, bad leadership and bad economic monetary policy decisions that have brought us to this to this position that we are in. And at this point, I don't I don't see I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel because it keeps getting bad every day. You know, every day you wake up, inflation keeps affecting affecting purchases. Every day you wake up, exchange rate keeps going higher and higher. And it makes it becomes increasingly difficult for people to live a comfortable life. And of course, if you know Bitcoin wasn't the same. This wouldn't be the story. Of course, the story would be different because Bitcoin, for one, is deflationary in by design. Bitcoin is deflationary by design. Our fiat, our fiat money is inflationary by design. What this means is, no matter how good our policies are, no matter how good the economy is, we always experience a bit of inflation with the fiat with the fiat design but with bitcoin it's the other way around because bitcoin is deflationary in it's deflationary by design i mean we have just 21 million bitcoin that would ever be in circulation and and right now we have over about 19.8 million bitcoin already in circulation so um the, the come a time where definitely we, we would not experience inflation with bitcoin rather would experience deflation which would be, you know, a good solution for the problem that we are seeing in Nigeria and other parts of Africa by extension. So when you try to explain Bitcoin to, for example, the merchants, do you find, and my understanding of the African culture is that you have um, the seniority, sort of respect, respect your seniority kind of mentality, sort of similar to Asian countries. So being in your early 20s or mid 20s, what is it like trying to tell your elders or your people who are senior to you about Bitcoin and that it could be a solution to the monetary problems? It's, it's, it has really never been a problem because I've been in gatherings and you know, situations where I happen to be educating older people and they sit down and they're listening because, you know, in Nigeria, especially the Nigerian youth, we like to see that the problem we are facing in Nigeria is because the older ones didn't manage situations well, which is why we are in this mess. So, so far, I haven't really experienced any sort of difficulty trying to talk to older people about Bitcoin. You know, to say the least, they always, you know, they're usually just quiet and, you know, listening to learn more about Bitcoin and ask questions about Bitcoin because, I mean, they know that technology is the future and you know, techn- technology keeps advancing and advancing and in order not to get lost in the whole the whole stages of advancement, they just have to, you know, listen and pay attention. And you know, of course, it doesn't mean I'm going to be cocky or you know, all of that. I still have to be as respectful as possible because at the end of the day, it's it's culture, it's culture and it's important for me to still respect those who are ahead of me in terms of seniority and all of that. So, of course, no one is left behind as, so, as long as, you know, I'm speaking to them in a very respectable manner. You know, there are some older people that I have to prostrate, you know, prostrate to talk to them just so I can get their attention. And it's it's really not a problem, you know. 
That's cool. I mean, I, I think that's a, a cultural nuance that's sort of specific outside the kind of the Western culture. So I wanted to go back to the first moment that you heard about Bitcoin. I know that you went to Bitcoin through your job, but when you first heard about Bitcoin, what was the biggest mental hurdle you had to cross in order to be convinced that it's a thing that you should pay attention to? I think I first heard about Bitcoin in 2012, actually. My sister, my older sister came home one time and she was telling my mom about this investment that people are getting into and, oh, it would be really, really nice if we can put in, even if there's $50, just throwing $50 in there and buy the, and buy Bitcoin and see how it appreciates, right? So my sister was coming off from an investment point of view. And so my mom kept asking her, what is Bitcoin? You know, what exactly is Bitcoin? Where can we get Bitcoin? But then my sister, you know, she didn't really have a wide or a good understanding of what Bitcoin was at the time. All she knew was Bitcoin is a good investment and that we should invest in it, right? She didn't really understand what Bitcoin was at the time. And so when she kept explaining, you know, and because she wasn't really making any sense, right? She wasn't making any sense, you know, I didn't really pay attention to it. I just like left it like, you know, whatever that is. So I just, you know, I didn't pay attention to it. So fast forward to my final year at the university, we really have on what we call the final year, second semester, you get, everybody gets to embark on a project. We call it project or thesis, you know, where you work on the research paper and all of that. So my classmate, Henry, he was working on one and it was blockchain for accounting. Yeah, so I studied accounting in my undergraduate. So my classmate was trying to work on a, on a research topic that was blockchain for accounting. And here again, that was my first time hearing about blockchain. Although I've heard about Bitcoin, but I didn't see the correlation of Bitcoin and blockchain. So when he said, you know, he kept saying that blockchain could be the future of accounting. And in his defense, he said, accounting is a double entry, it's a double entry technology or double entry system, whereas blockchain is a triple entry ledger technology. And so he kept saying that blockchain is going to be the future of accounting where we wouldn't need some of the accounting software. That we have. So basically he was just talking and he was really convincing. So I thought, I thought about it and I said, if this is going to be the future of my profession, why not I start early to start researching about this technology and see how this technology is going to be the you know, new big thing. And so I started researching about blockchain, started doing my findings to basically understand how blockchain can affect the accounting from profession and so you know that's how i got into researching about bitcoin researching about cryptocurrencies and you know at that point you know i was deep necked in cryptocurrencies i was trying to understand the entire crypto space and what solution cryptocurrency is actually bringing to the world and so you know in the midst of my research I found out that amongst all of these cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Bitcoin stood out for me. It basically offered everything a cryptocurrency is supposed to offer. And so when I saw that Bitcoin is actually the real thing, from all of these other cryptocurrencies that just, you know, care, what whatever, they're just they're just trying to get money out of people. That's what I thought. So as for my research, I saw that um, Bitcoin was different and Bitcoin with Bitcoin. There was a lot of solution and sustainability for the problems that we were um, we are experiencing in Africa. And I, and I just thought, like, you know what, I'm going to ditch cryptocurrencies and focus more on Bitcoin and see how Bitcoin can actually, you know, change things, revolutionize money, the monetary system, the way we spend money and what difference Bitcoin can actually make in the monetary economy and all of that. And so, you know, that was when I fell in love with Bitcoin. I saw the potential of Bitcoin and, you know, I stayed there. I remained there. <laughs> For our audience who are trying to understand the difference between Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, can you just really briefly sort of top view, explain the differences? You know, so for starters, you know, when I was learning about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I saw that, you know, Bitcoin was a cryptocurrency, right? You know, anybody would see would think that, you know, Bitcoin is another cryptocurrency, just like we have other cryptocurrencies and tokens out there. 
But now Bitcoin is different. Now Bitcoin is different in terms of its technological design. Thanks for joining us today and learning with us today. If the discussion with our guests resonated with you and you would like to dive deeper into the world of Bitcoin, don't miss out on joining the Orange Hatter Women's Reading Club. The meetup link is in the show notes. Also, if there are women in your life whom you think would both enjoy and benefit from learning more about Bitcoin, please share Orange Hatter with them. Until next time, bye. This episode is sponsored by Free Market Kids.